It was in 2005 when President Giberson um, was getting ready to make a speech at the Bridge Center for Racial Harmony. And he wanted to challenge the members of the Bridge Center for Racial Harmony to um, do some creative and innovative initiatives within the community, and one being focusing in on youth. And so he asked me if, um, um, if I would uh, develop uh, a youth initiative and work with the Bridge Center for Racial Harmony uh, and put together a program for young people in the Saginaw County area. And of course, I accepted the challenge. I was uh, very proud to be there at the beginning of this. Uh, it was an idea. It started with an idea that uh, it really would be interesting to see what would happen if we could bring together youth leaders from across the whole region and mix them up, uh, have them challenge one another, get to know one another, challenge them to think big, and, uh, and think about service and their community. But I knew that I couldn't do it alone, and I needed someone to assist and help me. And so I had heard about Dr. Nancy Lewis, and so I invited her to come and join the team. And so she and I sat down, and we just started brainstorming about what type of leadership program could we develop for, for the students in the Saginaw County. So that's how it got started, and we, uh, we wanted to talk about leadership, we wanted to talk about team building. We wanted to talk about giving back to the community. And Dr. Giberson said, you know, you can develop it into whatever you would like for it to, um, you know, different pillows of it. But the one thing that I really want you to do with these young people is teach them how to give back to the community. Um, Dr. Thorns approached me about uh, doing something like this. It was a brand new concept, brand new to her, brand new to me. Um, but I, I, um, I accepted the charge to uh, try to begin to work with young people from the high schools um, to develop leadership skills with them. So I think the first um, the year was a little bit of a trial and error uh, because we were um, still feeling our way around in terms of how we would um, uh, develop young people into true leaders. And uh, we experimented with a few things that we liked and some things we didn't like. Um, but I think um, over um, the period of the first year, we really developed it into a program that young people enjoy um, and they grow tremendously. And so over the years, our program, um, you know, our program has grown tremendously. And whereas we started off with um, three students, you know, from each high school in the Saginaw County, and now this is our 10th anniversary. We have 32 schools. We're in Saginaw County, Midland County, and Bay County. And we have close to 100 some high school students uh, who are part of the program, as well as we have students from Saginaw Valley State University who serves as mentors for our program. I was invited to participate in the Great Lakes Bay Alliance Leadership Program. And we had to come up with a project. And a colleague of mine, Matt Davis, who worked for Dow Chemical, was in my group. And he had heard about the Saginaw County Youth Leadership Program. And he said to me, why don't you make that a regional youth leadership institute? And I said, oh. I can't do that. Do you know how many students we're talking about? I have the perfect group now. And where am I going to get the funding from it? He said, build it first, and the funding will come. People will support it. And so I accepted the challenge. And that's how we came up with the Great Lakes Bay Regional Youth Leadership Institute. I am not Puerto Rican. I am Mexican. I am not Mexican. I am Puerto Rican. I am not Dominican. I am Mexican. I am not lazy. I am not machismo. I am passionate. 
I've got a rhythm running through my veins. I'm not a killer or a thief. I'm not a maid. I have both. I am full of culture. I do Three or four years ago, we partnered with Mosaic Theater out of Detroit. And so we bring these amazing high school students to our campus. And they uh, do a program on biases, stereotypes, and discrimination. Uh, some of the issues and things that high school students are dealing with. And based on the results that we get from our students, our students really, really do love that program. So we, we've continued that. The legislative, I mean, it's just awesome to see students sitting talking with local judges and talking with their uh, state, uh, their legislators and et cetera. So we've kept that program as well. In the last couple of years, we've added a new program and it's the PX2 program. And we, we are very proud to partner with Dow uh, to add that component. We have Dow volunteers who have been trained and who teach our young people about the mind and how to use your mind, your conscious and your subconscious, and talk about goals and talk about affirmation. And, uh, and that, that program complements everything else that we are doing. So we're, we're very proud to have added that component to our program. The Leadership Institute and its foundational pillars are very similar to what businesses like Dow Chemical focus on uh, for helping our people develop their talents. Team building is critical to business success in our interconnected world and those we interact with every day in business and our communities must have strong leadership at all levels. Uh, we look for integrity, civic mindedness, and really a comfort and appreciation for diversity and that really strengthens our communities and enables our businesses to thrive and bring solutions to the world's problems. Now, the Leadership Institute is fostering a pipeline of great talent uh, that will transform the world in ways that will surely surprise us all. Just even from the PX2 curriculum, uh, that they're gaining to understand that a lot of this is mental. You have to change your mindset. You have to work hard. Uh, these things are, they help them in high school, but these are things that they can apply to their daily uh, life. These are things, day-to-day -day things that we can use uh, to become not just better leaders, but better people. <laughs> a lot of things um, that we deal with, we think that, you know, when we hear the word leaders, it's someone that's in front. It's someone that's, you know, taking charge. Um, but a lot of times there's different forms of leadership. Um, and with this curriculum, it's taking that time to show them that, you know, a lot of time leaders may not always be out front, be the one speaking, but whatever your role is, be the leader in that role. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a great modeling opportunity uh, for, for these young people to uh, ob observe. And along the way get some really good advice from, from people that are very committed and who are very successful at what they do. And it kind of expands their, their horizons about uh, you know, what, what's possible because it's such a range of expertise that these young people are exposed, exposed to during the course of this uh, process. Scientists, community leaders, bankers, uh, business people. Uh, there's, there's a lot of exposure here so the students have an opportunity to kind of widen their lens on, on the scope of possibilities uh, in front of them. And also learn about uh, uh, what it takes to be successful. You know, it's, it's typically involves a lot of uh, dedication, a lot of uh, hard work, and those are very important uh, lessons for young people to learn. I've been here from the moment that they first asked me, which I believe was 10 years ago, and I do it because it's so important to encourage and expose the young people to what's available in our area, and basically you want to inspire them to be what they want to be. I was invited to be a part of the program here with the uh, Leadership Institute because I'm a newly elected official and um, part of the legislative luncheon they invited us to come speak to the students. Um, I think it's a great program. This is my first time being a part of it, but even in just the short time that I was able to spend with the students, um, I can really see that the, that the programs that they've done through this institute prior to today have uh, really honed their leadership skills. I still need to work on with my team what programs do we want to continue? Are there additional programs that we want to uh, bring into our pillows to make our program stronger? I'm all about continuous improvement. 
I'm all about, I'm, I'm all about uh, looking for new and additional ways that um, programs that we can bring in that's going to enhance what we're already doing for our students. See, our students are our future leaders, and it's our responsibility to make sure that we provide quality programs for our students and also prepare them to be future leaders. It's really important that, that Saginaw Valley State University continue to be a sponsor of this particular program and, and host it, but we can't do it uh, certainly to the extent of, that this program has been so successful without community partners, volunteers, sponsors, and, and all of those, those folks on the ground that make this uh, such a successful program. Several years ago, we went to Dow Corning and they uh, gave us a young lady by the name of Cassandra Williams. And she comes out every year and she uh, conducts a leadership assessment with our students. And so that's a new component that we have added to the program. And so we're very pleased. And I think the students really enjoy learning about their strengths and how to play to their strengths and how to use their strengths. So that's, that's been just a phenomenal piece of our program. And an, another piece that every year we try to in, improve upon is we always need community volunteers. And so this year we are so grateful to have two retired superintendents. I, 10 years ago, they started with me in the program. Now they have retired and now they're volunteering in our youth leadership program. And so uh, we're always looking for volunteers. Our partnerships continue to grow. We could not do this program without the support of Saginaw Valley State University, Dow Chemical, Dow Corning, um, United Way, Tri-City Links is a new partnership that we have where uh, women from this local organization are active participants in our youth leadership program. So I'm, I'm very, very excited and very pleased with the progress that we have made over the years and I continue to look forward for new and better things in the future. Well we couldn't have done the program without the community's involvement. I just have great memories of um, the first five years that I participated with um, Jimmy Green and coming in and talking to kids about don't judge a book by its cover and Dr. Tracy Weber coming in with kaleidoscope leadership with her horses which of course was a, a bit of a surprise I would say to young people um, that horses could teach them something about leadership but um, Dr. Weber was just tremendous and really uh, did a phenomenal job with those kids. I'm Dr. Tracy Weber, founder of Kaleidoscope Learning Circle and author of Wildly Successful and delighted that we've been able to support and be a part of the Great Lakes Bay Leadership Institute, formerly the um, Saginaw Valley Leadership Institute for the last 10 years. It started with Mamie and I coming together and her determination that horses were going to be a part of the orientation. We came together to create a plan to bring equine assisted learning to Saginaw Valley State University's campus. Dr. Weber taught them, um, they could even lead without talking, and they were instructed not to talk um, during this leadership exercise. And I tell a teenager not to talk, and that's a pretty interesting exercise in itself. But they learned a lot about themselves, and I think also the diversity. Uh, diversity training that we did. We had uh, a number of people come in um, to share stories and also we allowed the students to share their personal stories and I think they grew tremendously. We actually had some scholarship recipients at the Saginaw Community Foundation that noted that they were participants uh, in the Youth Leadership Institute and actually it looked favorable um, to a number of our reviewers of those scholarships and uh, so I think around the community it's seen that this is a great experience for our students. Um, I personally know some individuals from church, um, some of the very first students that participated. But I think what's even um, what's special is the fact that we went from more of a Saginaw County based program to now a regional program. And that's really another opportunity when the Saginaw Community Foundation along with my partners at Bay of Midland, our organizations got involved because we had the opportunity to actually fund the program when it became more regional. And that just goes to show that we are a regional community and that we have an opportunity for youth across our region to really strengthen their leadership. 
Dow Corning Foundation, through our Donor Advice Fund, has um, been a funder of the program for the past five years. And I have been out to visit it, and I've been to the dinners. I've seen it in action and have been so impressed. I've been involved from um, the very beginning with the Leadership Institute, uh, mostly through volunteer projects. Um, Dr. Thorns had contacted us and said, do you have volunteer projects that our students could do? Um, they've done uh, adopt a family uh, with our wish list and uh, they've done everything from go out and very enthusiastically buy gifts for the families and then they've had a big party and wrapped all the gifts and delivered the gifts to the families. Many days, many afternoons going back and forth, should we have this program, should we do this program, should we add this? And, um, and at the end of the day, we all agree this would be a great program to do. And so every year since then, I always try to kick it up another notch. I, I look at what we did the past year, we assess, we ask students for their feedback, we ask parents, we, we ask administrators for their, for their feedback. Because without a team effort, a collaborative effort, I don't think the youth leadership program would be where it is today. And, and when I say collaborative efforts I'm, and partnerships, I'm, I'm talking about the building principals and the superintendents are, have just been phenomenal. They work with us and the parents as well as the students, as well as the students on SVSU and the administrators here at Saginaw Valley State University. It, um, it truly, it, it took a village um, to develop this program into what it is today. We wholeheartedly believe in what we're doing and the difference that we're making in the lives of these students and in turn these students will make a difference in our community. We are investing in our community. We are growing, we are developing the future leaders for this community and you just never know one of these students may become mayor of Bay City, Midland, or Saginaw, or state legislator, uh, who knows, governor. You just never ever know, because these are, these are some amazing students that we have. And it's, it's so interesting to see them when they come in October. And then when I see them in January and February, and I see the growth in those individual students. And by the t in April, by the time we do our um, celebration, our banquet, it's, it's like, wow. These students have, they have bonded, they have made new friends, friends that perhaps they may not have ever had the chance to meet. They have learned new skill sets that will enhance what they're already doing. And uh, we're just, we're just very, very proud of our students. Having gone through the program and how it impacted my, my, I guess, career moving forward has been huge. I actually, um, the minute I graduated college, I started my own nonprofit with uh, using the foundations and the principles that I learned through this in initiative. And for me, I said, man, if we can do this in the Saginaw, Midland, Bay City area, I can take this back to Grand Rapids, Michigan, where there is a severe need for the types of things we were doing, the mentoring and the, the walking alongside young people. And so um, I used the, the foundation of the initiative to um, couple with my own vision and idea, and I formulated uh, what I now have is my, my nonprofit that I co-founded called Grand City Sports. And we use um, sports and education, uh, as well as community outreach and, and, and civic engagement to impact young people. The nice part about taking interest in young people when they're young, giving them tools and resources to be better, um, to, to see opportunities in careers that they could potentially hold in the future, and giving them the opportunity to look at their community through a different lens, to meet different young people in the community. Because for a lot of the students in this institute, it's their first time interacting with folks from the inner city. And vice versa, this is the first time for some inner city kids interacting with rural ones. And so it's creating 
an opportunity for young people living in this region to understand their region better just from meeting people from different places. To me, a leader is someone who doesn't always wait for someone else to be proactive. A leader is pro proactive in themselves. And that helps me first through law school because a, a lot of the times the person who you know, gets the job or gets the best grade or gets the great opportunity is the one who speaks first and the one who speaks wisely, but, but they're the one who speaks first. And then it's also helped me in my pro professional career in that lawyers oftentimes have to be you know, proactive and offer insight. And um, people look to lawyers for ad advice and direction, um, even if they don't realize that they're doing it. And so I, I learned through the Institute how to be comfortable in that role and, and to play it well. And of course, who can forget Draymond Green, who was one of the uh, young people who went through when I was working with youth leadership. And of course, being an MSU fan, uh, Draymond went on to be, um, of course, a star basketball player at Michigan State and now with Golden State Warriors. But the one thing I keep hearing from coaches, particularly uh, when he was at Michigan State, is uh, Tom Izzo said, Draymond is a leader. I'm, I'm very excited to, when I hear from our graduates of our program, Draymond Green, you know, graduated from our program, Glennis Talley, and um, uh, some of the others, uh, Brianna Alexander, um, and these students stay in touch with me. I, I'm, I'm so proud to hear what they are doing, the contributions that they are making, whether it's in our local community or if they are serving in a community elsewhere. Um, some are motivational speakers, some have written books, but those students, some are teachers. Uh, those students, uh, we are very, very proud, and I like to think that perhaps we played a little small part in helping them to be successful in, in, uh, in their role, uh, wherever they may be. This is, I think this is a, a program that over 10 years has uh, established itself as being a high value proposition for the students and uh, the participants and the agencies that have been uh, uh, supportive. So I, I expect this program to continue and, and to flourish uh, into the future. We have a responsibility as communities to continue to train our young people, to provide opportunities for growth, to provide really leadership development for them. So I think the program's important in that it's one component of helping to build leadership in our young people and helping to build that service orientation in our young people. So I think moving forward, that's why it is important to see it continue. And I like that they're endeavoring to bring young people from different communities together because in Midland County we have a wonderful youth leadership program and I'm certain that you know our neighbors have something similar as well. I think it's nice to bring young people together from Midland and from Bay and from Saginaw to learn about one another's communities and to work together in a different way than they might normally do so. So I think that's a value of the program is the regional aspect of it. I want to say is that we're so impressed with the strength of the program and we really appreciate the regional aspect of it and we appreciate very much being part of giving the students a chance to network with students outside of their communities. I guess say we're, uh, uh, we're proud to host the program and uh, we have every expectation of uh, continuing this uh, hosting for the foreseeable future. We just need that, it's so important. You know, they're our next the next leaders, there are next politicians, there are next councilmen and county commissioners and, and business leaders in this community. And that connection between community and good leadership is paramount to having um, a healthy community. See, our students are our future leaders and it's our responsibility to make sure that we provide quality programs for our students and also prepare them to be future leaders in our community. So what, wherever that will take me, what, whatever additional resources we get, I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm looking forward to this program growing and growing and increasing our numbers of students and 
increase in our funding research. I want to extend heartfelt congratulations to Dr. Mamie Thorns, the volunteers, youth mentors, and the student participants of this 10th graduating class of the Great Lakes Bay Youth Leadership Institute. Congratulations, graduates. I remind you that someone nominated you to participate in this program because they see great potential in you. Don't forget to thank them for this unique opportunity. And don't forget to make a commitment to put this training to work in your life and in your community as you go forward. Best wishes to all.